I have experience changing struts in a uh, in a minivan similar to his. So, Chris, thank you for guiding me through my mishap there. I appreciate that. But uh, but yeah, so praise God. God always takes care of us. He's so faithful to us. He's more than faithful. And so, um, you know, I, I want to just kind of, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. If you guys got your Bibles, that's where we're going to be this morning. And, uh, and I keep thinking, you know, my intention is to, uh, I'm going to be talking about the seven churches in Revelation, but I'm like, you know what, I think we need some preparation about, last week we talked about Jesus being our foundation, and this week we're talking about the church and what it means to be the church and what that looks like to be the church and uh, to build up one another. And in order for that to happen, we have to, uh, we have to know what our purpose is, right? Know our purpose. You know, we li- our mission statement, we know our mission statement is that we are, we are alive in Christ to fulfill our purpose, right? To love, live, and declare Jesus to our world together. Uh, and together is important. To do it together, to love, live, and declare Jesus, that's the outflow of us being alive in Christ. So we are alive in Christ to fulfill that wonderful and amazing purpose. And, uh, you know, but as we begin, I, I want to just... Um, I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, you got kids. Have they ever done things that are stupid? No? Never. 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 All right. Now the question is, as a kid, have you ever done anything that was stupid? Oh, man. I did. I tell you what. Let me tell you. I I did something that was really stupid when I was a kid. I was a teenager. Uh, you You know how you take driver's ed? I remember back in the day, driver's ed was free. So you take it during the summer, and uh, it was always, you know, t- teachers that would, that would just, they would get paid to do it during the summer, and they would, they would do it. And so I had this one guy, his name was, uh, my goodness, Mr. Van, Van, Van Dungeon. No, 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 it wasn't Van Dungeon. It was Mr., uh, some Dutch name, but I can't remember. Uh, but, but he was like the hardest one. He was the hard, and he asked for a project. Like you would do it, you would do it to, to do a stupid project, and the stupid project was you had to find, you had to draw out fifty different road signs and find two different locations for those road signs. I'm like, that is the stupidest project I've ever done in my life. Why would I do that? So it was a, it was a waste of time, and so I didn't do it. And so, but I, I passed everything else. I did the uh, you know the 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 test with the cones and. I did the road test, and then I did all the, you know, the, the, the written test, passed it all, but I didn't do the project, so I failed driver's head because I didn't do the stupid project. I thought it was stupid, so I didn't do it. And, uh, and so I was kind of, uh, you know, my parents, they thought, oh, he, 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 uh, he did it. He passed the, the test, and it turns out I didn't. And so they thought I could drive, so I was driving. <laughs> Because I I was embarrassed. I didn't want to tell him I actually failed driver's ed. So so I I drove without legally being able to drive. And so my parents, they, uh, and then finally I, I had to confess up. I said, you know what, I, I can't drive anymore. But I, I fortunately I didn't get pulled over. I didn't get into accidents or anything like that. But uh, but that was a stupid thing that I did. I did something stupid. I did many things stupid. So one time I... I, I I mailed an insurance payment for the first time. I was camp counselor up at Spring Hill up north, and uh, and so I had to mail in my insurance payment. So I mailed it in, but you know how first time ever doing that, I usually always take it to the uh, to to my insurance agent, and I took it and I you know he had you have the you know put the the you, you have the little thing on there that says you know post no post is necessary. It looked like that, but it didn't say no post is necessary. It said place stamp here. <laughs> And I didn't put the stamp on. I'm like, crud, I, I wrote the check out. So, you know, you, you do stupid things, right? And you live and learn. And never again. I've never done that before again. I've never done it again. So, uh, but but it's always, you know, it's just part of life. You live and you learn. You become more and more mature. And uh, and so whenever, um, you know, you, you go through life, you know, when we were young, we did stupid things. Even now, as adults, we sometimes we do stupid things. Uh, but maturity is a process. Maturity is a process. It never stops. We never stop becoming more mature. We learn. Uh, 
we continue to grow in life. You know, physically, that just kind of it naturally happens. But emotionally and relationally and spiritually, maturity comes with intentionality. We must be intentional about our spiritual growth. And, and we battle. Sometimes we battle. We want, our, we want what we want, right? We want our freedom. We want, we want less responsibility, more freedom. Uh, and we struggle. We struggle to do the right thing occasionally because we want what we want. It's a battle. It is an ongoing battle. And, you know, we, we learn. We learn ethics. We learn what, what right and wrong is. Uh, but applying what we've learned can be challenging. We develop unconscious bad habits, right? Sometimes we develop those because we live in a broken world, because we have broken families, because we, we have a dysfunctional upbringing, uh, you know, because we go through past pain and, and struggles and abuse, and we respond and we react to those things. So some of those things that it's just kind of we just think that's normal because that's all we've known. And, but, uh, but even in the midst of all the pain and the pleasure, the past relationships, there's some good, some bad. In all of that, some healthy, some unhealthy Rules never motivate us to maturity. doesn't matter how many good rules we have. Rules never motivate us to maturity. But when it comes to our relationship with God, how do we become mature? By having an awareness of God. By having an awareness of his presence. By having an awareness that, that God wants to change us. That God wants to do a work in and through us. Uh, it's not enough to merely, you know, give give Christians a list of do's and don'ts. I think sometimes we can get stuck in the do's and don'ts of living as a Christian. But we need to have a healthy biblical view of who God is. And so we don't, uh, you know, when, and also to, to see that this is the final product. What's the final product for us? Is to be more and more like Jesus, right? And that's, that's the end goal. That is, that is what maturity looks like, for have, to have us to become more and more like Jesus and learning the necessary process for becoming all who God wants us to become. Because God has something great for us. So in, you know, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, if you got your Bibles, that's where we're going to be. You know, Paul, he deals with the process. He deals with that process of becoming God's masterpiece through, through spiritual maturity within the church. God has the church. The purpose of the church is for us to grow together, for us to grow closer together. And so let's go ahead and read uh, Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. We're going to be 1 through 16, so bear with me. Long text, but that's okay. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. It says this. It says, As a prisoner for the Lord... Then I urge you, as, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be, com be, com be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, and, and uh, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave, them, gave, gave gifts to, the peop to his people. What does he ascended mean that he uh, mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave apostles, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service. So that, the so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be, uh, we will no longer be infants 
tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their in their deceitful scheming instead speaking the truth in love we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Let's pray. God, I thank you that that is what you called us to be. You called us to be built up and to build one another up as the body of Christ. And Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that we are called by you. You called us to that, God. And Lord, I thank you that even in the midst of struggle, even in the midst of of setbacks, God, that your grace is sufficient and you are always faithful and you are always good. Help us, Lord, to be, to become that masterpiece that you've called us to become, to grow closer to you, to become more and more like you, Jesus. Bless us and be with us. Speak through your word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Real quick, as, as this masterpiece, we must grow. As his masterpiece. You know, think about that, that we are God's masterpiece. It says earlier that we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And so and we are, and that is a process. That is a process as we become more and more like Jesus, as we become, as, as we become that masterpiece, as God shapes us and molds us. You know, we grow into the character that reflects Christ. We grow in the gifts that promote Jesus. We grow in the knowledge of the truth. We grow in our love for one another. God's purpose for salvation is to transform us, to mature us from the inside out, and to continue to grow in our relationship with him. You know, as as we closely follow Jesus, we begin to reflect him. As we closely follow Jesus, we begin to to reflect him. That's like, you know, uh, I've, uh, I think Jeannie Mayo, she said this. She said, uh, show me your friend. Show me your, I will, I will show you your future. If you, is it your friends. If you, you, show me, you show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You know, our, our, those who we hang out with will influence us. We spend time with Jesus, I tell you, that's going to influence us. We spend time every day with Jesus. That will influence us. And with spiritual maturity, that will you know, cause us to become grow in our relationship with God. It will cause us to, to have a, a deeper love for Jesus and cause us to grow up in Christ. Uh, and, and with that spiritual maturity, it comes the fruit of maturity. There is fruit bore as a result of our maturity. When, it, when a plant grows, when a plant grows up, it produces fruit. Just like when we grow up, we're going to produce fruit. God wants to use everything, every part of us, everything, the good, bad, and ugly, for his glory and for his purpose. And so first thing, you know, spiritual maturity uh, means that our character will reflect his character. Our character will reflect the character of Jesus. You know, obedience is always a response to grace. It's not doing, doing, doing. It's a response to God's grace. It's because of his grace that we're able to enjoy his goodness and his presence. God acts first, and then as humans, we respond. You know, John talks about how, uh, you know, he first chose us. He first chose us before we had an opportunity to choose, choose him. That's the way God works. God, God shows us his love and his grace versus Two, 2 and 3 says, we uh, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing one another in love, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Growth requires humility, it requires gentleness, it requires peace and love, which is simply the character of Christ. That is simply the character of Christ. G- growing in our character is more important than growing in our gifts and our talents. I'll say that again. Growing in our character is more important than growing in our gifts and our talents. Because, listen, if we're going to be a man or a woman of integrity, 
That's, that's, that's really what counts when it comes down to it. Because we could be so talented, but I tell you, if, if, we're, if, if our character does not align with the character of Christ, or at least we're, we're pursuing that, listen, that's, that is something uh, that we need, that we need to, to evaluate in our life and say, God, search me. Lord, help me, God, to, to, to have what I do or what I say, what I think, align with what you think, Jesus. If God loves us, you know, if God's love is so great, if his salvation is so powerful, if God has granted such reconciliation, then as believers, that's how we should live. If God's given all those things, that's how we should live. If we are, to, you know, if God's given us, if God's blessed us with salvation, if God's blessed us with reconciliation, if God's given us forgiveness, then as believers, that's how we should live. Come on. Verse 1, it says, therefore, a prisoner, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to live a life worthy of your calling, worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. You know, it's more than just people who are, who are called to professional ministry, to full-time ministry ministry or part of an elite worship or ministry team. You know, it's it's more than just that. That that is not the calling. Everybody as believers, every Christian is called by God. Come on. Do you believe that church? Every believer is called by God. We are called. If we've been transformed, if we've encountered the love of God, if we received Jesus, if we're following Jesus, we are called to more than just it's more than just fire insurance. It better be. Because I tell you what, if, if it's just fire insurance, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and, and say, you know what, it's covered because we're going to light a campfire in the middle of the living room. We don't even care. And that's how so many people live our li- We live our lives that way. But that's not how God intended us to live. God intended us to live called, to live a life that is worthy, and live a life. I beg you to live a life. Lead that life worthy of your calling. Because God, the creator of the universe, has called you to more. He's called you to so much more. You know, and I get it. Many people, they don't feel called. They feel overwhelmed with life. And so they put things on pause. They put ministry on pause because they don't feel called. But our calling is an act of grace. God has given us everything we need to live a life, to live that life, to lead a life worthy of your calling, marked by humility, marked by gentleness and patience uh, and tolerant love and, and forbearance and peacemaking. God has given us all those things to reflect Jesus. It's less of us, more of him. Less of our ego. Less of our ego, more of God's goodness and God's grace. Because, listen, our ego becomes the main problem when we, when we think about us, when we allow our ego to get out of control. Our ego, it's all about, you know, our, our problems. You know, our main problem is that, is, that uh, is reflecting a healthy relationship with one another. When our ego gets in the way, when our ego gets in the way, it become, you know, we become results-driven. Uh, we become, uh, you know, it's, it becomes... Uh, results on, based on feelings of inferiority and ba- based on our own arrogance, driven by envy and greed and prejudice and defensiveness, and, and, and we become intolerant. We become abusive. That's what our ego is all about us. Pride and ego is always the root of spiritual failure. But when we see all that, that we have, as blessings. We see all that we have as blessings given to us through the grace of God. Being grateful, being humble, coming before the Lord, it becomes something that's natural. When we, when we, when we are grateful, when we have a heart of gratitude and say, God, thank you for blessing me. God, thank you for blessing me with the things that you've given me, Lord. Help me to be a blessing to others. It's God's grace. God's grace gives us the ability to reflect the character of Christ. Christ-like character means bearing with one another in love. Bearing with one another in love or putting up with each other in love. 
putting up with each other in love. Sometimes we, we got to put up with other people, and that's not, that's, that's a challenge, right? People hurt people, hurt people, right? Sometimes that can be tough. It can be a challenge. But it's because of God's grace. Love, agape love, it says on the screen, love, agape, enjoys the other person, but it doesn't, it does not exist for enjoyment. That's hard, right? When, whenever we think about love, we, we, want, we want to receive it, right? We want people to reciprocate that. It has nothing to do with us reciproc- us getting it. It has everything to do, just like Jesus poured everything out. And if that's how we're supposed to love, man, I tell you, that's tough. That's a challenge, but I tell you, God wants us to be at that place where we are so mature. We are not offended by what people say or people think. We're not offended because we don't get that attaboy or that pat on the back. It's not about that. It's about showing the love of Jesus, bearing with one another in love, putting up with each other in love. That is the character of Christ. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. Just like what DC Talk said. Come on. Love is a verb, right? A lot of you guys didn't even know what that is. But that's all right. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. But it is an act of will. And it's costly. Love is costly. Love focuses on the one another. And Paul, he mentions one another 40 times in his life. Letters he talks 40, 40 times throughout his, all of his epistles, all of his letters that he that he writes, uh, forty times one another. It's all about the one. Another. Think about he says you know think about one another, serve one another, love one another, build up one another, bear each other's burdens, submit to each other, and encourage each other. Galatians six two says carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Following Christ is a God-directed, Christ-defined, but also an others-oriented lifestyle. Understanding and trusting in the love of Christ, it sets us up for reflecting Christ's character. When we understand it, when we trust in God's love, when we trust in his grace and his mercy, understanding it and trusting in God's love, man, that our value, we cannot get, we cannot earn any value. We can't. When it comes down to it, our value is, is wrapped up in Jesus. Our, our value is wrapped up in Jesus. It doesn't matter what people say about us. It's, it's about recognizing that our value is so connected to Christ. That's, that's maturity. That's how we're able to step up. That's how we're able to become more and more like Jesus. Secondly, unity in the body of Christ is evidence of a healthy body. Unity in the body of Christ is evidence of a healthy body. Even though we, you know, we all come from different backgrounds, we all are different. In so many ways we're different, but we're unified as followers of Jesus. We are unified as followers of Jesus Unity is not something that we create. It's something that we have through the Spirit of God. Verse 4 says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you are, were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Uh, the oneness, our oneness in Christ as his body reflects the oneness of God and the oneness laid out through the gospel. Through the gospel that, that Jesus is one with the Father and he's one with the Holy Spirit. He, there's, no, there's no conflict there. We are, that's how the body of Christ needs to be. We need to be, in uni, in uni, we need to be unified through that. Our oneness in Christ, it's, it's based on who God is. And as we follow Christ, we, re- we maintain a spirit of unity. It's not about us, right? It's about Jesus being glorified 
in us. That is, it's through the Holy Spirit that we're able to walk in unity. One faith means that there is one gospel. There is one way to heaven. There's only one way to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. If people have, have the same Lord, if they believe in the same gospel, if they experience the same reality of being baptized into Christ and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, should they not live out this same unity? Verse 3, it says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. This is not merely a unity in the, in, in the ideas that we believe or the way, the methods. I think sometimes we can get caught up in the methods or, or the way people think or the way people look at things. And that's, that's okay. That's, that's, that's called just the way we work, right? We're all different. We all see things differently. But when it comes down to the fundamentals, when it comes down to who God is, that's what, that will never change, and that will always be what dictates our behavior, right? It's about, you know, unity resulting from the experience of receiving, receiving from God, following and abiding in Christ. Unity is the evidence of a firsthand relationship with Christ. As we abide in Christ, as we abide in the love of God, that we are, that we are unified in that. We are unified in that. So there's unity there. Also, finally, a healthy body stays connected to Christ together. A healthy body stays connected to Christ together. We are together. Real ministry happens to the church. You know, as we serve, as we build one another up, as we grow spiritually, we grow spiritually as we do ministry together. As we do ministry together. We got VBS coming up. I tell you, we got, we got uh, you know, schools coming up. I tell you, what, how many opportunities has God given us, you know, just to, just to share the love of God and just to show the love of Jesus. We got midweek connections. We got prayer. We got things happening together as we prepare and we say, God, help us, Lord, as we, we, have, we have a lost world outside of these doors that does not know Jesus. So many people do not know Jesus, but I tell you what, God has given us the privilege to do ministry together. Verse 11 says, so Christ himself gave the apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Paul shows here, that God gives pastors, he gives teachers to his church not to be ministers of the, uh, of the church, but to equip ministers. Not to be, I'm, you know, and I, and, and I tell you, we do, an unhealthy church is a pastor-driven church. An unhealthy church is a pastor-driven church. When we get a hold of what God has called us to do, we are ministers of, of Christ. We are ministers of the gospel. Who then are the ministers? We are ministers. All Christians, all Christians are to be ministers, so you are a minister, right? You are a minister. Oh, you're like, what? Boom. You're a minister. The role of pastors and teachers is to train and to equip the saints, all believers, to be able to serve in whatever ways that God has called them. The word equip, it means to make right, to let, to, like, like setting of a broken bone or to bring a completion, uh, to bring to completion by training or restoring. If there's, if there's healing, there's, there's things that need to be worked out, there's things that need to be maybe, you know, maybe, you know, set into place. You know, pastors and teachers are, are to, to, to approve and to, to, approve and to, to encourage the, the, the body of Christ, the, the, you know, the, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, uh, flourish and equip the believers to do the work of ministry which results in building up the body of Christ. The church builds itself in the faith 
as members care for one another, as we care for one another, as we show love to one another and manifest the other gifts of God, the gifts that God gives us, the give he gives us the church for us to be the church. Yet the church also builds, you know, builds itself up as it reaches into the community, as it reaches people with the love of Jesus to show, you know, just like what Bradford is talking about, how, how God has given us people in our life to share Christ with, to be the light, the hands and the feet of Jesus in the community, to show the community the love of Jesus, drawing others into the fold. God has given to his church an enormous responsibility. Matthew 28 Jesus, he gives us that commission as disciples to go in every nation. Every nation, we think, well, that is a huge responsibility. This involves preaching and teaching and healing and nurturing and giving and administrating and building and many other tasks. It, it's, all, it's all a part of God's plan. And fulfilling this is not a solo act. It's not something we do on our own. That is impossible for us. This is impossible for us to do, but God calls us as members of his body. No one should be a bystander. No one should be an observer. Everyone must do ministry because we are all called to ministry. Verse 14, it says, Then, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people, of people in their deceitful schemes, scheming. I got a story to share with you, kind of a funny story. I remember when I was a kid, I, lo- I could not eat sugar because I was a hyperactive child. And so my brother knew that. And so sometimes we would have uh, chocolate-covered raisins, and, and I don't know why. It, you know, it wasn't even sugar. It was like unsweetened sugar it was, or unsweetened chocolate. It was called, like, carob. I don't remember carob. Oh, goodness. It's awful. But you know what? That's all I knew. That's all I knew. And so, and so my brother, he, uh, older brother, never forget, never forgave him for this. Just kidding. Um, he uh, he went and he grabbed a rabbit poop, and he told me he said, "Here is a chocolate covered raisin," and so I was so excited. I was like, oh, "What?" So I I put it in my mouth and I took a bite. I know carob's bad, but that was really bad. <laughs> it was really bad. I'm like, "You are you are a trickster, man." You are a trickster. You are cunning and crafty. And I was, I was, I was prepared. Next time, I was like, man, he's not going to do that again. And I tell you, my brother, he did so many things to me. He was, I, I'll tell you stories later. But I tell you, that, you know, he, but, but I tell you, that's, that's, you know, when we, when we find our source of truth, when we recognize who we are, when we, when we are, when we are established in the word of God, I tell you, God's word is truth. God's word is truth. And we live in such a world where there's so many things, so many versions of truth. But I tell you, there's only one truth. There's only one truth. Know where to find your source of truth in life. And that's not to be, you know, so we're not going to be duped or, or fed lies or by half-truths or deceivers, by charlatans and tricksters. You know, we, we're not going to be, we're not going to be bound up or caught up by all those things. We're not going to be off guard because we remain in that process. We know who we are to become in that process, and that helps us to know the truth and know that there are things in our life that prevent us from, you know, that, that cause us to become victims of, of other people who want to influence and, and cause us to do very, very bad and harmful things to us. But that's not God's heart. God's heart is not to bring harm upon you and to bring hurt upon you. He wants to love you. He wants to show you that he has a wonderful purpose and plan for your life. Don't be deceived. Don't allow things to, to cause you to, to, be, to be deceived. That's why we have to know the truth. We have to know the truth. We help us to, you know, help, uh, it helps us to be confident in the truth. When we know the truth, when we know God's word, you know, because we are living 
the truth by loving others, by loving others, and we're, we're reflecting that, who, who God wants us to be. In verse 15 and 16 as we close, instead of speaking the truth in love, instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow, we will grow and become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds each builds itself up in love as each part does its work you know as we become more mature in our walk with the lord as we become more mature spiritually we have a better grasp on the truth we have, we have a better grasp on who god is when we go through things that kind of cause us to be having to go through it go go take a detour in life or or, or if things just happen and, you know, we can become bitter about those circumstances. And, 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 but when we know the truth, when we build our life upon who Jesus is, you know, we're not going to abandon, we're not going to abandon our calling. God has a calling for each and every one of us. We have to know the truth for ourselves. We have to know it for ourselves. We can't just rely on a Sunday morning to hear the gospel or hear the word of God. We have to, you know, I love, you know, just... Uh, you know, Dawson coming up and just being real honest and saying, you know what, it's not about performance. I think sometimes we can get stuck on the performance thing and saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. But it's about knowing God. It's about spending time with the Lord. It's about spending time with him and just, just knowing the truth, what God says about us. You know, start reading. Start reading the Bible for yourself. I encourage you to get, you know, a proverb a day, one chapter a day, you know, from the Gospels. And, and you know, add... And start reading through the book of you know Genesis, through throughout the Bible. So that's three chapters: one proverb, one 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 chapter in the Gospels, and start from the beginning, Genesis, all the way through. I tell you, God will God will use that time. Journal, pray, pray the Word of God. You know when we when we pray a Psalm, you know whatever you decide to do, work out a plan, work out a plan, and stick to that plan. Because I tell you, we are going to be, in our world today, if we're, rely, if we're spending more time on Facebook than we are on the Word of God, I tell you, we're going to be influenced by that. That will be the influence. That will be what we take more than the Word of God. We will be, we will be duped. We will be swindled. Because God has something so much more for us. It's, it's so much more than just head knowledge, though. It's, it's, it's knowing it's embracing the truth. It's trusting God in our live in our lives day in and day out. You know, that's what we can do personally. We can say, yes, God, your word is true because I'm living proof of that truth. I'm living proof of that truth. You know, the truth and, and, and the love, it binds us together. The truth is that, uh, you know, that we have, you know, that we grow in our faith. When we grow in our relationship with Christ, our relationship with Christ becomes closer when we come Closer and closer to God, we will know His will. We will know His plan for us as we do it together. Listen, we're in this together. We're in this together. You're not alone. You're not an island by yourself. But God has a plan for you. What is God doing in your life? Listen, I want to just encourage you. Just share. What is God dealing with you? What is God working in your life? How is how is God just uh, just speaking to you right now? You know, maybe that calling that that you may be doubting or questioning or, or just, you know, you're maybe struggling right now. I tell you, God hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. Maybe you need some encouragement. That's what the body of Christ is all about. It's for that. It's for receiving that love and that encouragement for, for you to continue on that walk as we follow Jesus together. Amen? Listen, as the body of Christ, our goal is to become like Jesus. Our goal is to become like Jesus, to be to to imitate, to be an imitator of Jesus. And so, you know, God saved you for a greater purpose, more than just saving you from hell, but going that extra mile and saving you and giving you a purpose. Stay connected to the body of Christ. Stay connected. Grow in the character that reflects Christ. Grow in the gifts that promote Christ. Grow in the knowledge of the truth and grow in our love for one another. You know, that's how we're going to become more mature.
That's how we're going to fulfill the work that God has for us as the church. It's all about his, his plan and his purpose. When we surrender our plan and our purpose to him and we say, God, I know you have a, a wonderful purpose for me. God, I know I'm called, but Lord, help me, God, to have a, a clear idea of where you want me to go and what you want me to do and how you want me to lead. You know, God, God's placed you in families. God's placed you in a workplace. God's placed you here at, at, uh, at New Life Assembly of God. God's placed you here, and God wants to do a work through you. God wants to bless you and equip you and strengthen you and do that work in you today. I mean, you know, maybe today you, uh, you feel like, man, I just don't, I, I know, you know, I, what, you, what you said, Pastor, about being called, uh, I, I just, I, I kind of am struggling a little bit with that. You know, what is it that you called me to do? Maybe, maybe you know, you recognize that, you have that aha moment, but you don't know. You don't know. I want to pray for you. I would just, just be honest. Just say, you know what, Pastor, I just need prayer about that. God, if you called me, Lord, how, how, how what is it you want me to do? What is it you want? I think sometimes it's not about what we do. I think it's just, just remaining in the Lord and just say, saying, God, I, I just want to hear from you. I want to hear from you, Lord. I, I, want, I need to spend that time in your presence because, because I don't want to just do something just to do something. God, I want to be led by you, Lord. I, I, want, I want it to be an outflow uh, of, of the love of God just so filling up me because when, I, when I'm filled up, I have something to give to other people. God wants to do that in your life. But just to receive that calling and saying, God, I'm available. I'm willing to do what you've called me to do. But, Lord, help me to do. Help me to lead. Help me to be led by you. Help me to be hungry for your presence. If that's you, just lift up your hand. I want to quickly, I want to just pray, pray for you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you for being the Lord that we are your body. We are your hands and your feet. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you've called us, each and every one of us, God. And I know sometimes we, we think that, uh, that we, uh, you know, it's just there's so many things. We're overwhelmed with life. We're overwhelmed with just, uh, just so many things that just create problems for us. But, Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, just to, to rely on you, Lord, to rest in you, Jesus. God, to clear out our day, to clear out our calendar. Lord, to clear out things, uh, Lord, that we would just say, Lord, I'm just willing to, to, to just to seek you and to know you. God, I'm willing just to hear your heart, to hear your hearts, Lord. And uh, God, I just pray that you would just uh, speak to us. God, I pray that you would encourage each and every one of us, Father. Uh, Lord, is it, Lord, that our relationship with you would be more than just a, a one day a week thing where we hear your word preach on a Sunday, where we spend time worshiping you on a Sunday. But, Lord, I pray that you would give us that love and that desire just to spend time with you on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, Saturday. And then when we come back on Sunday, we're just excited to be together and to be connected as the body of Christ, that we're able to, to encourage one another and lift up one another. And, God, I pray that you would help us, Lord, just to, uh, to be a blessing, to be a blessing to those around us, Father, to be a blessing to those here at New Life. And, Lord, in our families, Lord, help us, God, as we just encounter you, Jesus, Lord, that we would be growing closer and closer and closer to you, Lord, that we would say, God, it's not about my freedoms, but, Lord, it's about what you want to do in me today. Bless each and every one of us. Keep us safe. Keep us strong in you, Lord. And uh, I just, I pray blessings upon each, each person in this room as we live out the calling that you have for each and every one of us. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Love you guys. If you want to come, if you want to, you know, maybe just, uh, I can pray for you, whatever. Um, these altars are open. Uh, I want to open up, give you, give you that invitation. Also, um, I, I, it's funny because you guys don't see this, but I see the people behind me. They're looking at you. You almost burned, you know. Uh, 
So uh, that g- kind of tells me that, well, they're probably done with their kids' shirts. So so get your kids. you got youth group tonight, Bonnie and Shorty's uh, at uh, Shorty's Place, the Jimenez Pool and Resort, uh, 5 o'clock. Love you guys. Have a great week. VBS, don't forget. Oh, yeah, had, oh yeah, don't forget. We have a meeting next door in the cafe for all those who are involved in uh, in uh, VBS, right? Is it those who are volunteering for VBS? All right, if you are volunteering for VBS, that's that's including me. So I'm gonna skedat in the cafe, and uh, if you wanna if you are a part of that, please follow me to the back. All right.